if you look at entanglement, not just of two particles, you know, maybe some of you saw on TV this animations and all this kind of thing, but when you talk about, uh, about uh, these correlations between multiple particles, then both the prediction of theory and the experimental uh, ex uh, observation says that these are completely independent of their relative arrangement in space and time. And I wonder whether something like that is possible in the brain. It's completely independent. So, so, the, so the question of causation doesn't come up, cannot even come up in this case. This is outside the, uh, you know, and therefore, therefore we talk, we talk about irreducible randomness on a fundamental level. And to me, this is one of the deepest things we found in the 20th century. That randomness is there, and we cannot, we cannot, we cannot uh, 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 go around. So I wonder, in the in these pictures, is uh, uh, Rising was the first concept, and second was uh, Rising and pattern development. Like we track that. we track patterns in the environment and the rhythms in, in seem to shape our perception. Right. I wonder whether this this construction of patterns is somewhat biased. Uh, it, could, it could be biased by the expectation that we have patterns, or that they can be structured in a certain way, and and you know as. So we agree that we have patterns. We, yeah, but, uh, uh, well, yes, we, we have patterns. So... And, but I'm not sure whether, whether this is the only possible way to look at it. When you listen to music? Sorry? When you listen to music? <coughs> when, you, the, when you listen to music, yeah. for example, or when you... Yeah, so when you listen to the drum beating, right. that is a pattern. Okay. And, and, you know, and that pattern, sure, there is a certain pattern in that. But if you look upon perception, is everything which you think you perceive really a consequence of, of the physics going on, or is there something this is another my my well, is there something constructed in the brain which is somewhat you know un, unwarranted somewhat because by experience we learned we learned that these patterns work and our ancestors probably survived because they knew the difference between a, between a, 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 a lion and a I see, I think that's the question. And then we hear the drum beats and we hear a pattern there. And are you offering that that is a construct for us to understand and to kind of economically go about our business or? Some, something like that. Yeah. I think that the inter. It, but it, which I would say it, it's a concept which which we construct, which is useful, it works, but maybe interesting things go on when this breaks down. Um, when, most definitely. So, unfortunately, we know that pathology sometimes pathology, yeah. happens. Um, I think um, hallucinogens also offer a, a window into, you know, the mechanisms not being quite as they are on a daily uh, Mm -hmm. Basis. Um, but isn't also the the kind of what is it called uh, uh, rationalization? Isn't that also part of it? That you experience something, and then you, then your brain or you construct some explanation of which you of which you then learn that it was wrong. It couldn't be the case. But you are completely, well, we are completely convinced that this was the explanation, this is how it, how it would go on. Right, so, so that is the prediction formation, right? We are constantly... It's, it's retro-diction, actually. It is? It's retro-diction. I experience something and I 
Let's go to it. This should have happened, but that's completely wrong. We have great examples of that in the last. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. oh yes, yes. We we definitely <laughs> retrodict a lot, <laughs> and that's my standpoint. I think this is one of these interesting phenomena, time in the brain for me, and um, I mean I've never thought of it as an instance of entanglement. I wouldn't exactly know how to. Um, think about it, but I will say that in neuroscience, randomness can be important. We don't have your type of random, I don't know of your type of randomness, but we do have a lot of noise. We have a lot of noise, and I think that we couldn't do a lot of what we do without noise. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But God, that's randomness, right? It is, yeah. Uh, well, it is, but I would always assume someone can explain it, and you are telling me that I need to consider that the noise is potentially inexplicably or... I think... Uh, I, mean, I think randomness, in the way I talk it, about it, is constitutive to the universe. Uh, to the brain, most definitely, the so answer. Not, and there's, in that, there are situations where you cannot go deeper, where you cannot explain deeper what goes on. And this is probably not... Uh, when the most clear and evident case at this point of now. But my personal belief is that a lot of which goes on is really random. And we, it, we construct our ideas to make the world coherent. They kind of they <laughs> do a good job. They do a good job. Yeah, we do a good job. Yeah. <laughs> we, could, we could actually, you know, we could actually, uh, it's good that we maybe sometimes even mislead ourselves. Right? I wonder, you know, it, it, this is a, this is another another question. I have, I have been discussing with with people in, in, in brain research, and I asked one, I asked them one question: Is there a single case where you can follow uh, the the whole uh, causal chain from impression to the decision is made and the date and the, and the action that you do? Then? And they tell me, no, there's not a single case where you really can step by step in detail explain it. There are some collective statements, but... And then I, and then I ask uh, some, uh, some of my, my friends, I ask them, so why can you then claim that causality works out there? <laughs> and the answer was, how could it, how could it be different? And I tell them, and you say, yeah, to me? <laughs> This is really a question which really interests me. And if, if to answer that, to answer that would be very important, either way. It's one of those questions where, you know, either way, it's, it would be in either way you can show yes, this is a causal kind of apparatus, or no, this is not a causal kind of apparatus in all cases. And then, you know, on the, on the, on the individual level, and then a very different question is whether the quantum mechanics at, at, at play. That's a very different question. It's complete, some other non causal thing. Right. Right. Actually, I mean, actually, I'm not sure if we perceive time. We perceive things around us, and we have a feeling that something is past, that there's some. It's even to respect back to the future. But I don't think that we perceive something like the flow of time or some, some continuity of it. I think all this is, is, a, is, a, is a construct. <laughs> <laughs>